Okay, you speak about calling the police. Yeah, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I believe recently you kind of, you not kind of, but you did make some really big headlines with the Mob James situation. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I called my FBI buddies and said, hey, y'all see that Mob James interview where that stupid mother made a confession by possessing a gun through all them state lines? I said, no, I didn't see it. Send it to me. So yeah, I sent it to him. What'd they say? Well, he didn't, pos he didn't brandish the gun. We need him to show that he had possession of the gun. Him just saying it ain't enough to get him. You know, man, I looked in the comments and I seen a lot of people were not happy that you- Yeah, they're mostly poor people. I don't care, Most, it's mostly poor people leave comments in the YouTube section. Rich people that's living well, doing good in life, they are not taking their time to express their opinions on the internet. Man, I don't care, I don't, I don't care about what the comment section say. All them people poor. Most of them people ain't got a goddamn thing, homie, and they'll never see me, and I never see the comments. The common thing I seen in the comments was I supported Charleston White. Man, listen, listen, listen. Those people never supported me. I did $10,000 in sales my first month opening my clothing line. I didn't see none of them people's uh, email addresses on there. You must forget, I've been a community activist for 10 years. Where would these people support it, homie? I just done a spring break presentation at the Dallas County Juvenile Detention Center. Where was these people when I needed their support, when it really mattered? That solid support of people who I don't know, man, I don't give a fuck about people supporting me and I don't know they support me. Show me you support me. That's what mattered to me. Other than that, fuck you. Yeah, I ain't, yeah, fuck a fan, nigga. Most fans go bootleg your movie. Most fans go bootleg your CD. Most fans go try, nah, man, I don't give a fuck about fans and I don't care about now motherfuckers say, I used to support Charleston. You a lying motherfucker. You ain't never supported me. You ain't sending nothing to my cash app. I don't want your kind of support. Fuck a broke motherfucker support that ain't socking nothing to my pockets. When I got people from all around the country sending me donations and money for the things that I do. Right now today, this interview was scheduled because we got a kid that's being released, that got released from the Dallas County lockup facility. This is a sh where we bring them to come shop for their clothes at. I put this on my YouTube. Ain't nobody supporting and sending no money to help us buy shoes and clothes to put in these young nigga pockets when they come home from the facility. So nah, homie, they just online typing and talking. So I don't give a fuck about now, motherfucker, online. I think most of them dumb and stupid, especially a broke motherfucker online typing and ain't got $150,000 they done made in nine months. That's what I done made in nine months, talking shit. What was it that made you want to get him locked up? Uh, nothing. I don't like gang members. He a gang member, period, point blank. I ride around and call on the drug houses when I know they gang member drug house. You can sell drugs in my community as long as you ain't no gang member and you help get back to the community. As long as you help us buy bikes and toys at Christmas time, give away turkeys, help us bury people when they die, nigga, you can sell dope if you ain't a gang member. But if you're a gang member, I'll work with the police and the FBI to get rid of you. I think I seen recently they made a post about you. Yeah, they make a lot of them about me. Yeah, every day it's a motherfucker making a post about me. I'm like the hottest motherfucker in the country right now. <laughs> How do you feel when you see something like that? Oh man, uh, I love it. Uh, I always, I always wanted attention as a kid. I used to do the Michael Jackson so good. I used to do talent shows. Uh, I used to want to be an actor. So yeah, nigga, I was the class clown. I was the most popular kid in school. I was the little boy that had all the name brand clothes in the 80s that all the girls liked in school. So now, nah, nigga, I'm just enjoying this attention and getting the money that I love. Yeah, I love this shit. I wouldn't know what to do if motherfuckers stopped watching me. Being that you don't really like gang members, what made you want to sit down with Mob James to begin with? Oh, uh, I didn't know he was a gang member. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I thought I, I used to call him the elder. I used to call him Mr. James. I used to call him the elder. When I first met him, I called him the elder, Mr. James. 
I used to say yes sir to him like an older guy when I first met him. Uh, as I began to, you know, uh, interact with him, uh, I started noticing the gang traits. And then he reached out to somebody that I know for me to call him on behalf of me saying the word slob. And when I knew that he was bothered by the word slob, I knew he was still a gang member. When you're delivered from something, when you're delivered from something, it don't affect you in no shape, form, or fashion. So uh, once I saw that he's almost twice my age, and he's still talking about who he used to be and what he used to do as a gang member, and when you look at him today, he don't have nothing to stand next to his glory days of gang banging other than the fact that he playing granddaddy now. Nah, homie, that's a disgrace to me. I watched my I watched my grandmother beat heroin. I watched my Aunt B beat crack. I watched all the black women overcome whatever barriers, whatever obstacles. But I've been watching these black men, all them niggas stay weak. They can't get past who they used to be. All of them stuck on yesterday years. So when you hear me talk about, nah, homie, this is what I do. That's why I brag about what I do. I ain't telling you what I used to do. I'm telling you what I do right now today. Work on capital murder cases, work with kids. This is what I do. I ain't got to tell you who I used to be. I'm showing you who I am and what I do. So uh, when I sat down with him, it wasn't to discuss what we were discussing. He was coming down to work on the at a summer camp that we had put together to talk to the kids. I took him into the juvenile detention center with me for the spring break program. I took FBG Duck's mom into the spring break program. I took Bugatti Casino into the spring break program. Shannon Briggs into the spring break program. So I'm taking all these people to come work with children, but I ain't taking no goddamn gang member that's still affected by the word slob. To go talk to no motherfucking kids. No, nah, we don't want you nowhere around here. Our juvenile detention center staff don't want you back no more ever again. So at that point, you decided you wanted to turn him in. No, nah, I could have turned him in if I, I yeah, I could have turned him in then. I knew he had the gun on him. I could have went out and dialed 911 and said, hey man, I got a nigga in here with a gun on him. I could have turned him in then. If that's what I wanted to do. He went on Vlad TV, and everybody say Vlad TV is the police. Everybody say Vlad TV is the feds. So why would a convicted felon, self-proclaimed gang member, go on Vlad TV and he the police and make an open confession that he traveled through multiple state lines possessing a firearm, and it's against federal law? And he had to travel on a federal highway to do all this. Why would such an idiot would go make that confession? So he snitched on himself when I heard that. I said, man, listen to that stupid motherfucker. Man, let me call him. Say, man, say, man, let's see if y'all can get that nigga. He did that. He gave me the idea to do that. I wasn't thinking about calling the police on no nigga. But when I saw the Vlad TV interview of this stupid ass man, this grandfather, Go risk it all for what? He ain't coming down here to check nobody. He wasn't coming to kill nobody. You, this nigga ain't coming to do no life sentence in Texas at 60 years old. He ain't that goddamn bad. His daughter already in jail. He the grandbaby. He got, see, he got the baby through CPS. So he, he wants y'all to believe he fit to come down here and go do a life sentence in Texas. Come on, man. He got to be stupid. But I just wanted to prove a point. These niggas are tell on they self. These niggas snitching on they self. So I just made some calls to my gang buddies. I got some gang buddies. They just ain't in no gang. They law enforcement. As a matter of fact, on Monday, I'll be teaching a class at the University of Texas for one of my special agent buddies that's retired for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I'll be teaching a criminal justice class. I do it twice a semester, so four times a year at the University of Texas. This is what I do. But they caught up in an internet guy. 
No, this is what I do, man. 